transfer center in, in the north of Germany at um, PTZ in, in Bremerhaven. And um, my topic today will be the downstream processing, which is the recovery and purification of value-added products um, after fermentation, so out of a fermentation broth. So just after um, the production with Biotrend and what Anna just explained, um, yeah, is uh, uh, following by the downstream processing. Um, but first, um, I would like to tell you a little bit or give you an idea um, uh, TTZ Bremerhaven and what people like me are doing there. And uh, then I would like to guide you through um, different recovery procedures, um, also focusing on fa at factors which are influencing the specific choice if you're downstream processing, the hands-on uh, two case studies, um, the bio-based succinic acid, and the polyhydroxybutyrate. Okay, um, I hope you can hear me much better now. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, yeah, finally, um, I would um, like discuss, to discuss with you um, the assessment and recovery of, um, um, of the recovery concepts and also biorefinery concepts. Um, This week. Um, yeah, TTZ is a private nonprofit organization founded more than 25 years ago in Bremerhaven in the north of Germany, where the river Weser flows into the North Sea, so we are quite far up in the north. Um, mainly, we are working in um, applied market driven research and development um, services um, in the field of food, environment, and health. And I have like around 120 uh, colleagues coming from different parts of the world. And we are working in direct contracts and bilateral cooperations with the industry and also small and medium-sized enterprises. Mm, um, yeah, we are also working um, in third-party funded projects like in Transbio, we are participating as a partner, but we are also uh, initiating and coordinating those projects. Fields of ex expertise in TTZ, um, starting with the food technology and bio bioprocess engineering department. It's a department which was mostly involved in the work of Transbio, but also we have a specific baking and cereal technology department, sensory laboratory and um, molecular science and analytics, as well as all the environmental, um, the environmental sciences like um, water and wastewater management, sustainable land use management, and sustainable energy management. Um, yeah, coming to the topic of the downstream processing. Um, it's important to mention that in the recovery and purification is an integral part of the entire production chain, starting from the agro-industrial byproducts, the pre-treatment and hydrolysis, which we have heard about this morning, but also the solid state fermentation and the submerged fermentation. To, today, in those two case studies, I will focus on the submerged fermentation. Um, yeah, and then at the end, coming to the recovery and purification of the um, value-added products. So now, just giving you an idea that in Transpire, we have worked with bacteria, yeasts, and filamentous fungi to produce PHB, succinic acid, and enzymes. And um, yeah, this can be done in submerged and solid-state fermentation. And um, thanks to Anna, we already know a bit more about the intracellular and extracellular products. So um, um, for today, for the downstream processing, I, I took one intracellular product, which is a PHB, which is accumulating inside the cell, uh, and the extracellular product, succinic acid, which is produced inside the cell, but then it's excreted into the liquid media. And um, of course, 
mm, this has an influence on, on your process, on your downstream process, because usually you start um, with separation of solids and liquids, and then, yeah, you need to know in which phase is your product. Like, if you have an intracellular product like PHP, your product is in the solid phase. And um, if, in the case of succinic acid, um, your product is excreted through the fermentation medium, then your product is in the liquid phase. Um, yeah, that's what's the part of the downstream processing. Okay, there are many, many factors influencing the specific choice of your downstream processing, which is first of all the raw material which you are using. If you use byproducts from, from the agro industry, um, you can have a mix of complex components. Um, you most probably will also have to do a pretreatment. And um, as Thomas has explained this morning, um, there can be several inhibitory um, substances um, occurring during this process. So that is also something which um, yeah, influences the downstream process. Of course, also the choice of microorganism has an influence, like it's um, different if you're using bacteria, yeast, or filamentous fungi. It's different if you have an extracellular or an intracellular product. Um, of course, also the type of fermentation has an influence on, yeah, on how, to, how to recover and how to purify your product. Um, it makes a difference if you have a solid state fermentation or if you have a submerged fermentation or if you have a batch or fat batch or continuous fermentation. All these are factors which are influencing your yeah, downstream processing. The type of product you also need to have in mind because it can be, for example, a sensitive product. Maybe you cannot use special um, solvents or special chemicals. Maybe that would somehow um, dis dis destroy or damage your product. Um, yeah, of course, you also need to know the chemical and physical characteristics um, of the target product. Yeah, and that's, um, yeah, that will, will be important as well as the type of application which you want to use it for. Maybe different purification levels are required, and that's, um, yeah, that's uh, interesting to, to know for, for your purification step. Right. Um, yeah, coming to the, to sp uh, specifically to the succinic acid. Um, as we already have heard, it is, um, so cynic acid is a chemical building block and it can be used for many different practical applications as you can see here. But it is also important to mention that it is a decarboxylic acid. That means it has two different dissociation grades. And it also um, uh, means that we, um, at low pHs below the, the pKa1, um, it is mostly present in the form of the acid, um, and at a pH um, above the, the pKa2, it is mostly present in the form of the salt. And that's also very important to know. Um, uh, if you want to recover a product, so do you need to recover a salt um, or an acid? Um, yeah, we have heard already about um, the different advantages which we have by using uh, yeast for succinic acid um, production. And also the US Department of Energy, they have published a document in which they say in an ideal situation, the fermentation would be on a low pH because the conversion of the salt into the free acid does add significant costs. And therefore, a low pH fermentation will be essential. And that is something which we were um, yeah, doing in the Transbio Consortium um, as um, uh, yeasts are much more um, tolerant to, to low pHs. Nevertheless, you still have all these other challenges during downstream processing by efficiently separate the succinic acid from a mix of multiple other components like residual sugars, byproducts, bio-macromolecules, 
and so on and so on. Um, yeah, the, for, in general, for organic acids, the state of the art is using precipitation for the downstream processing, precipitating salt. This has, has the advantage that um, you have low technological barriers and risks, but it has also certain disadvantages. Mm, for example, it needs a high chemical input, you have high costs for operating, and you have um, a lot of waste disposal, uh, which is uh, unwanted, and therefore the industry is looking for alternatives for this pro process. And this can be, for example, which we were working in, in, tr in Transpire Consortium, electrodialysis, reactive extraction, chromatography, crystallization, and filtration as final purification step. Of course, um, all those methods um, have their own advantages, but also they have their disadvantages. And um, I will give you a short overview about um, the reactive extraction, which is quite an interesting technology, I think. And um, in reactive extraction, you start with a fermentation broth, then you separate the cells, so you have a cell-free fermentation broth, then you bring it together with an organic phase, and um, the organic phase contains a reactive compound. This is most often a tertiary amine. And um, during mixing the, um, the tertiary amine, it can form a complex um, at this, uh, this interface between the liquid and the, the, the solvent phase. It is forming an acid amine complex. And uh, like this, the succinic acid is transferred from the liquid phase into the organic phase. So then you have your target product in the organic phase, but um, at the end, you want to get it out of there again, and you want to have it um, in a new water phase. So you need a mechanism um, in order to, um, to transfer the, the succinic acid um, into a new water phase. There are different uh, methods available. One of them is a back extraction, using a back extraction compound, which is displacing the, um, the succinic acid from the acid amine complex, and like this, it is transferred again into a new water phase. And then you can have, yeah, usually the final purification and, and crystallization drying and final product application steps. Right, um, for the polyhydroxybutyrate, um, yes, we have heard already that it can be an alternative for petroleum-based plastics as it has similar product, uh, properties like um, polypropylene or polyethylene. It is not soluble in water, which is also very specific for the downstream processing. And it is accumulated inside the cell so if you want to have the PHB, um, which is inside the cell, you need to disrupt the cell in order to get it out of there. Um, usually there are two different um, processes. Um, one is uh, the digestion of the non-PHB containing material using chemicals. And um, another option is um, the solvent extraction directly of the PHB. Like this, you can um, achieve high recovery and purity rates, but you also have certain disadvantages because those chemicals are most often uh, toxic for humans and toxic for the environment. And also, they have um, a negative influence on the PHB itself. So therefore, we were looking for different um, alternatives. And um, in Transpire, we have tried um, a combination um, of cell disruption for chemical, uh, uh, mechanical and um, physical approach, um, and then followed by extraction or treatment with green solvents and also with enzymes. This had, um, yeah, there you have the advantage that um, those substances are harmless to the environment and to humans, and the quality of PHB can be maintained. 
Um, looking at the economic impact of the downstream processing for PHP production, um, uh, you, uh, we can have a look again at this scenario A and scenario B. And um, yeah, having a look at the costs, it makes quite a different difference if you use um, yeah, different um, downstream processing methods. So for the scenar scenario A, um, you have costs of around five um, US dollar per kilogram, and here you have around nine US dollar per kilogram. So where does those costs are coming from? Um, yeah, you can see here. Um, a large portion of those costs are made uh, from the raw materials. And this is also something which um, the Transpire Consortium was working on um, because, um, yeah, uh, we were trying to use um, 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 byproducts from the agro, in, agro industry um, as carbon sources, and that's a way how the costs will also be reduced. Um, yeah, uh, coming to the um, alternative um, solvents for PHP extraction. First of all, um, we were looking uh, for a solvent uh, which, um, in which PHP has a good sol solubility. And this can be calculated with the solubility index um, of the Hansen um, radius. And um, the lower the, the, um, the index, the better is the solubility. And um, more than that, um, it um, should also be um, a biocompatible um, uh, solvent, so let's say a green solvent. And um, here you can see the higher the score is, the better is the uh, biocompatibility. And at the end, you would like to have um, uh, substances which are in this quarter here. So the substances which are green and substances which have a good solubility for PHB. There we found anisol and cyclohexanone and compared them with uh, chloroform. And um, at the end we found that um, the anisol gave the best um, recovery uh, yields and also the best extraction, uh, the, the best purity. Okay, just to summarize or to, to finalize, um, a specific hurdle for, um, for the succinic acid, I would say, is to, uh, yeah, to have the selectivity um, for the succinic acid. As we have heard, it can, during fermentation, also other byproducts are produced. It's not only succinic acid, and that's quite uh, tricky to, uh, mm, yeah, to, to have the uh, a selective downstream processing. And for PHB, I would say mm, it's, um, the challenge is to, to find something which is harmless to the PHB itself but also um, harmless for the environment. So in general, you would like to replace or reduce chemi chemicals and energy um, yeah, dur during your, your process. Uh, because at the end, it can make up a large portion of your costs, like <coughs> 50 to 70% of the do total production costs can be made up by the downstream processing. And I think it's also important to see that there's not um, this downstream processing, you always um, need to have a look, or uh, uh, need to have in mind all the different factors which I just mentioned, which has an influence on the, on the downstream processing. So at the end, it would be nice to have an integrated biorefinery concept for the entire production chain. And a lot of those factors which uh, yeah, we did here already this morning, so one important factor is a low-cost um, feedstock going beyond the first-generation feedstock, but also um, using that, having in mind low organic and inorganic impurities, which might come for also from the feedstock, 
um, it's important to look at optimized fermentation um, processes with less byproduct production. Uh, it yeah, would also be nice to have in situ recovery, product recovery, in order to increase the productivity and reduce the neutralization agencies or agents used during fermentation. Crew production of other high, uh, high added value products is um, also um, yeah, a good opportunity to work on, uh, especially uh, for yeast can be ethanol for biofuels. Then you will also need to look at the energy and mass integration um, strategies, like the reuse of biomass, the reuse of uh, chemicals, and so on. And what um, we also did in Transbio was using a cascading concept um, for energy production by the residual biomass, which was left over, and also by the byproduct itself for biogas production and energy production. And that is um, a topic which um, we will hear after the lunch break uh, from organic waste systems. And yeah, with this, I would like to close my presentation. I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I don't know if you have time <laughs> for that <laughs> or if everybody is hungry like me. <laughs> well, you can always write me an email or just talk to me or write me whatever you like.